G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, I've been working on this old Century electric motor for the past few days and uh, pulled it all apart. You would have seen when I cracked the case open in the last video. And I've cleaned it all up and everything's in pretty good shape, really. Um, for the age, it's not bad. The bushes are good, radially, no, no, no wear whatsoever, radially. There's a bit of wear, a bit of end play. Uh, the shaft goes in there a little bit. And on these uh, armatures, they shim the shaft with some fibre washers, and these two are broken, worn out. So I've got to uh, shim it on this end so that it pushes the armature back that way, up against the, the, br the four brushes in this end. And I'm going to have to make a shim up because none of my shims I got. I must have hundreds of shims from you know engine work, but none of them the right size, of course. So I'll have to make a shim up. I don't have any fiber washers this size either. It's a very odd size, and it's not standard fiber. It's a high density fiber. So I'll make one out of stainless, uh, which will be quite okay for this for this job. And it's got to be a 1.2 mil shim. Uh, I made a bolt up, uh, one of the bolts was missing, which one was it? Oh well, can you tell which one it was? It's actually that one. I've made an exact copy of the others, out of stainless as well, I had it as stainless. And uh, yeah, she, she goes good, so I'll fire it up. Oh yes, one other thing also, big thing on this, where the wiring went in, the wiring was terrible because on these the four wires that come out uh, just come out and hang there in the middle of nowhere and, and you know they're flexing around it's a shocking arrangement these would have been wired in into a junction box which is probably nearby so I had to re-insulate the wires uh, and I made up a junction box to go on it that's all fabricated completely I did that with the bullfinch torch. Once again, this is where brazing, you know, bronze brazing is fantastic because this sort of work you can do it. It's not like arc, which is going to burn it away. This is only thin gauge stuff. You can do a beautiful job. So yeah, that was all just fabricated by hand uh, using the LPG um, gas torch. So that's all good and solid. So yeah, now uh, it's just better to make the shim up. I'll fire it up and you can, you can see, you might get some sparks. These light up a little bit, but yeah, it's all cleaned up and good. I'll zoom in. We'll fire it up. You might get a couple of sparks come out of it. They're renowned for sort of sparking a bit, these. No, that's all pretty good. Runs nice and smooth. Shut it down. Okay, well, we'll get on with making up a shim. Right, well, I've machined the piece of stainless to the correct outside diameter. And I'll use a little boring bar like the one I showed you in that last one of those last videos, how to make one to do the inside. Once again, you can't do these jobs with the drills, it's just not precise enough. Uh, so yeah, that's perfect, that's perfect, inside and out. Now I'll just have to face off the edge again because when you machine you'll always roll that edge over. So to do that I'm going to face it off with the little pencil edge eye grinder. That'll give you a perfect finish without putting any burrs on anything and then I'll cut off the sh measure and cut off the shim using the pencil die grinder once again to show you how useful these little things are. You can do this with a parting off blade I suppose but I find you get better results, uh, less chance of tearing thin shims. When you use a friction disc you know a parting blade can catch and angle your little thin shim so yeah these work good. 
Right, you can see we've got the edge of the cutting disc aligned with the outside of the of the job. So we now have to move in 1.2. Right, to do this we'll just use our little homemade uh, indicator. So we just come in 1.2. It's going to be slightly undersized anyway, so if I'm a fraction over it, it's not going to matter. I don't want it to be an absolute snug fit because you've got to allow for a bit of heat expansion. So there we are, that should do it. That's near enough. Right, well here it is. Now it's just a matter of deburr it on the back, that's the good side, where we faced it off. Now we just have to run this over an oil stone or I'll just touch it up on the lindisher and uh, finish off with an oil stone until we get it to the right thickness and we're good to go. Just finish her off a bit of oil and oil stone just to get a nice super good finish on it we're good to go I mean this would be more accurate than probably the shims that are sitting in there, the old ones are all worn. But this will, this will get it going good enough, I think. There you go, 1.25. Bang on the money. So that's pretty good. So yeah, that'll do the job nicely. So now the big question is, will it fit? Perfect. Perfect, that one there. And this. in shot, oh yeah, perfect in there as well, perfect in every way, so there you go. Actually, I might take the, that's a stainless steel shim, ah, that's a spring steel shim. That's a fibre. I'll put it in this order, I think. Alright, that's good. Hopefully, this will do the job. Yeah. 
that looks good on the clearance on the end here. That's good. We've got enough, we've got enough clearance, that's good too. So. Alright. Now we'll put the end on. If I show you something interesting about this before I do. It's interesting looking here now that the end's off again. You can see the four brushes and they're spring loaded and they're a blade type brush they can only go in two ways that way or that way because they're wedge shaped they're slightly non-rectangular I mean, it's done that way for a reason but beats me but uh, yeah interesting so they have been coated with a sort of a copper skin that's nearly really all worn off but Probably make them look pretty, I suppose. All right, we'll put it back together. So, the washers here have to go on. One copper and one fibre. Hmm. Tightness, if there's any tightness, I'll have to adjust the shims a bit. No instructions, it's all fly by the seat of your pants stuff. Well, after almost giving up on this make-up a shim idea, I mean everything was perfect, it measured up properly. Which mechanically it should have allowed that end play to, to come, come out and give the brushes more um, more lifespan. I mean they're getting down near the, near, the, near the stops. And according to what I read, as long as the brush holder is, you know, further away than one eighth from the from the uh, commutator, everything should be good. So I've took it off, put it back, and then it was tight. Anyway, now it's perfect. Look at that, that's perfect. With absolutely no end play, that's just absolutely spot on. And, oh, it's the bee's gnat's whisker there. What it comes down to is when you put these motors together, you can't just rely on pulling up the end cases with the screws, even if you do it symmetrically. Combine, you've got to give it a tap with a hammer. You see where the paint's all been knocked off on this end here. That's where the, this has been to bits a few times, I think, over the years. And uh, yeah, you basically have to tap the end covers on with a hammer and then do your screws. Otherwise, it, it, the bearings come up tight, you know, the bushes bind. As that is, that's perfect, and uh, yeah, so the, the job did actually work out successfully after all this rooting around. We'll fire it up. Oh, good old spark there. It's good to see. Smooth now. That's quietened it down. It was getting that 
bit of resonance in it. That's good. That's good. Smooth as butter. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, after all that hassles, vaporizing around, we finally got there. Who would have thought, eh? Oh well, that's it. That's the thing about the sort of work you learn all the time. You take on something you've never dealt with before, like these old girls, and yeah, it's good when it works out properly. All right. I'll shut down the motor and shut down the shed and go and have a beer. I'm feeling a bit, a bit stuffed. It's been a long day. All right, well, that's it from me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.